Hey, Mark here from Builder. Let's talk about generating unique links for records in the database and then linking out to them so that you can open a page that displays the information of that record. Um, so there is a little bit of boilerplate that I've got in this project that I'll go through first, um, but there are other videos for the boilerplate part and then we'll dive into the details. So the first part of that boilerplate is the homepage here. I just have, um, I just imported or brought in the SAS marketing homepage page template, just dropped it right on. Um, I also imported the authentication pattern, the user authentication pattern. So there's actually a whole set of pages on user authentication that just come with that. So I didn't have to worry about user sign up or sign in or any of that stuff. And then the only thing I did over here to the homepage was I made this open uh, run and open sign up action. Uh, I'm sorry, flow. And then inside of there, there's an action for opening the sign up route that I created. And that sign up route just links out to one of those sign in, sign up uh, pages from the pattern. So once you've got that set up, now you have a home page and you have a way for users to sign up and sign in. Once you're there, then what you can do is allow your users to create specific records or create a set of records. And then for each record, we'll generate a link. And for each one of those, uh, we'll make it to where it opens into another page to view those details and create an edit page where the person who created the record uh, can actually edit the record, but no one else has access to do that. So uh, let's look at the four pages that I use to create that setup. It's pretty straightforward, really. You have a dashboard page, which is just where the user is going to sign into. And when they're signed in, this is where it's going to go to. And then inside of the dashboard page, we have a grid that displays a set of rows. And in this case, I created what I'm calling stores. So the user is going to create one or more stores. And each store has a store name and a store image. And so when they create the store, it'll create it just as new store with no image. And then they can edit the store. And when they edit the store, they'll create a or change the store name and upload an image if they choose to. All right, so let's take a look at how I did that part. So this dashboard page has a few things set up on it. Um, there's a button here for new store. And in the events, you can see it runs this flow called action create new store. And it's really straightforward. It just creates a record in the stores collection. And I mapped the store name and just typed in manually. I changed the input argument to text and then typed in manually new store. So now every time a new store gets created, that's going to create uh, a, the store with the name new store. So basically in this case, I'm expecting the user to then click on that new store row in the list and that will open the edit form where they'll fill in the details. And you could go through and create a, uh, a page called create where they actually fill in those details when they click the button, it pops it open and they fill in those details. It's just a user experience choice up to you how you wanna do it. I kept it simple here because that's not really the, the intent of this lesson. So um, once you've got that creating the new stores, then you'll want to drop a grid on here um, now you need a page for the grid. So in every grid in the properties, there is a row page where you can select the page to display in the grid. So a grid is effectively a way to display a set of uh, records from a data collection using another page inside of your project. So there's two pieces you need. One is the row page and the other one is a data collection to associate the data to. So you can see on the grid list, I can select data. You can see in the collection list that I have a collection selected. Now I've gone a little bit further here and I'm actually filtering this list as well. So because I only want to show the current user's data. So I'll show you in a moment how I do that filtering. Now this form here, this page here, I actually used a block for. So if you go to blocks, there's one called grid row. You can just drop that on and grid card you could use as well if you prefer a card view. Uh, but I do I use grid row here and what's nice about that is if I'm just doing something basic like this I can really quickly get it set up and all I have to do is bind the data so I click on store name go to data choose from field from a collection of stores and from the store name so what's going to happen now is when this grid gets set with that data each row is represented by one of these rows 
sorry, each record is represented by one of these rows. And then the data is represented as a field here, or as a, as a text box here for the store name. And then the same thing on the image, it's mapped to the data field for image. Um, so that's really all you'll be doing here is just new store and that will create that here. Now there's two other pieces that I wanna show you. One is the filtering of this data so that it's only the data for the, the current user who signed in. And I wanna do a few things to this dashboard page to enable that. One is I want this dashboard page to require authentication so that you can't get here unless you're signed in. And then the other thing that I wanna do is make it so that when you click new record, this list automatically refreshes. So we'll do those two things now in the page properties of this page. So if you look up here in the top left, you can see that there's two, there are two icons here. This first one is whether or not the page has authentication. So when it's highlighted, that means that this page requires authentication. So for instance, if I go to, if I click on the store view, the public view, that is not set, right? It's showing you that it's not requiring authentication. So that's gonna mean that this page can be accessed by someone who is not signed in. Now this dashboard page is set that way. If I click on this, it'll open the properties and there's the authentication section down here. If I toggle that off or on, it will change the setting here. So that's the first thing I wanna do. I wanna make sure that only a signed in user actually can access this page. The other thing I wanna do is go to the data listeners. So that you can access by clicking this or you can go into the properties and then click on that tab. Either way is fine. It takes you to the same place. What you'll do here is create a new data listener that's gonna pop open a small page where you're gonna fill out the details. The same settings as Rotor right here. Um, what, I'm gonna, what I'm doing here is I'm telling it run the page binding, which is gonna check every element on the page to see if it has a data set up, which in this case my grid, has, it, remember it's set up to get all of the data of the stores and set it into this grid. So I'm gonna run the page binding, which will set all that in, and I'm gonna run it um, when the stores are modified, but only when they're added and removed. So you can tell it to run on anything, which is just no limiter at all. Run only on certain fields, and you just select the fields you'd like. Or you can tell it to only run on add and remove of a store, in this case, the stores. So basically what'll happen then is when the new store gets created, it'll automatically refresh this list. The nice thing about using a data listener for this, as opposed to like just running an action after the create, is that if you're signed in on two different devices or if someone else is signed in, as you as well um, into this project, then the list will actually update across all of the browser sessions that are open. Um, so it's real-time data pushing across uh, anywhere that that data is being viewed. The other thing is that the delete button here, I set up to run a delete action inside of a flow. It's a really simple action. Uh, it's just called delete permanent record, or permanently delete record, excuse me. And all you do is choose the collection. So it's gonna get the ID from the current record that it's in, and it's just gonna delete that. Now, because we set the, the data listener up on this page over here to automatically uh, run on add or remove, it's gonna automatically remove that whenever the user clicks the button. So now I've got a way for them to create a new store and to delete a new store. So let's just take a look at how that looks in action. So I've got a couple of stories here already. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click new store and that creates my new store. Now remember, it just puts new store in there. I didn't set any name or anything. So now what the user will need to do is click on it to open it. So we'll go take a look at how that works in just a minute. But they can also just click delete and that will delete the store from the list. So that's all you've gotta do for the creation and for the delete. Now for the open, we wanna go take a look at this page here and what I've set is for on click of the outer container here so on the grid row outer container on click of that run this flow called edit store and I'm going to do two things here I'm going to open a page which I'm going to open my store edit page into a container on the dashboard page so on the dashboard page I've set up a light box which you can get out of elements, if you just type lightbox, you'll see there's different ones. I chose lightbox centered, so it pops up in the middle. 
So on the dashboard page, I have Lightbox centered, and it comes with two elements nested inside of each other. So there's the outer and there's an inner. So the action over here, when you're editing the store, it opens that edit store page into the Lightbox in inner container on the dashboard. And then the second thing I'm doing is actually running a flow back on the dashboard page called Lightbox Show. So I created an action, sorry, I created a flow called Lightbox Show where I'm unhiding the Lightbox. And there's actually a lesson on Lightboxes as well if you wanna dive into how all this works. So effectively, they click on this and that's gonna open the record into the store edit. Now, because this row has the context of a particular record in the collection, it will automatically open that particular record into this page as well. So all of the data binding and everything will just work automatically. So if you go to data, you can see I've bound store name to the name field. I've bound image to the store image field. And we go a little bit further in just a moment, I'll show you how all the rest of it works. But let's take a look at that real quick. So if I create a new store again, this time I'll open it. So I click on it and I can just change my store. So this one is called the best store and we'll upload another image. Let's see, I'll just pick uh, the perfect sunset. I think I might have already had that one back there. I did. Um, but you can see one thing to note is it's already updated back here in real time. So I'm using another data listener to do that. So if I change something here, the best store number three and click away, you can see it's already modified. So the way that I did that, if you click on here and you look at the, the page setup, we have a data listener there as well. This one I'm telling it to run that page binding anytime anything changes on the stores because it knows the context that it's in, that it's a particular store. So it's gonna automatically run whenever anything is changed on that store. So that's how it knows to pick up when you change the image or change anything else, it's gonna automatically update that row. Okay, so now let's talk about the part that we came here to look at, which is for each of these stores, we want to have a unique link generated that we can use to access the public page for that particular store. So if I click on one of these, we'll open it up. You can see I actually have a link that I've generated here and I can copy that link or I can click open and it will open the public view of that page or of that store. Okay, so I'll go back, open that up. I can copy it and I can paste that into a browser or send it to someone else that I want. Um, so let's take a look at the steps to get that created. So on this page here, what I'm doing is on page load, there's a set of things that happen. So the page binding runs all the time. You'll see that in every page load action that you have. I'm sorry, in every page load flow that you have. Um, and then I've also created this other flow called set public profile link. So I created a flow over here and then I nested that flow inside of the page load. So in this one, what I'm doing is I'm setting a value into a text box. So you can see there's a text box down here. Let's zoom in on it. So this text box here, I've removed the display text so it doesn't show anything until you've set the data into it. And when that flow runs to set the profile link, I'm setting a value into that text box and I'm using an input type of concatenate. So I'm concatenating the value together. So this is so that I can get the proper URL strung together no matter, if, no matter what custom domain I publish this to, or if I'm publishing to a subdomain, or if I'm using it in my uh, builder development environment or in the preview, it doesn't matter. It'll work properly if you set it up this way to generate your link. So first thing is a static value, uh, just text of HTTPS colon slash slash. And then the second one is actually of type system. So if you go down to the bottom under advanced and choose system, It'll give you this menu with all this stuff from the browser that you can use. And I'm just choosing subdomain. So the subdomain is the part before the main domain. So that would be like www or something along those lines. 
Now you want to pull this dynamically like this because if you're using a builder subdomain, you'll want it to get that subdomain.builder.com um, or the preview link. The preview link is actually a builder subdomain. And then the next one is just a static text again with just a dot for the dot between the subdomain and the domain. Then another system with domain instead of subdomain. And then this next to last one is another text where I'm just saying slash store and then a slash and then the current record field value with the ID. So that's going to take the current record that I'm in, so whichever one I opened, and get the ID of that store and put it at the end. So what that does is just generates this link. So if I click that, you can see it's got HTTPS and then the subdomain. The domain in this case, because I'm in the preview, is builder.com slash store and then slash the ID of that uh, store. So that's how we're going to create the link. Um, it's just a straight concatenate of the existing values that are already on there but the ID is always going to be unique. So Builder generates these unique IDs for every collection record. Now if you want to, you can actually generate a different uh, ID. There is an action called generate GUID, and this will actually create a 16-digit hexadecimal, or actually I think it's, it's not a 16-digit hexadecimal, it's actually just a GUID. So this one will actually create a GUID for you, so you could put it into a variable, like I'll just call it GUID. I would put a weight, and then in this concatenate, instead of getting the value from the current record ID, I would pull it from that variable that I just generated here with this action. But if, you're, if you really don't need that, if you use just the straight up IDs, it's no problem at all. So now that we've got our link created, uh, what we're going to do next is have an action to open the link and another one to copy the link. So on the open button, if I go to the events, I can see that we have a flow here on click, action open store link. And this, I'm using the open URL action. And the URL is just coming straight out of that text box because I've already set the value into the text box. Remember on page load, I'm setting that value. I do the set public profile link, which sets the value. So I'm just getting that value out of there. And I'm telling it to open into the current tab. So when I click the button, if I go here and then click the button, that takes over the current tab and sets it in there. Go back. Now the copy, there's actually an action called copy to clipboard. So same thing, I'm just pulling the value for the copy out of that element on the page. So I pull it out of that same exact element. And that allows me to copy that out. So that's how I'm generating the link, opening the link, and copying the link. Now, there's one other piece that we have to look at, which is on the public view. So this is the page. If I open this up and I go to open, this page here is this page here. I only have two elements on the page. I have the store name, which has the data binding of store name, and I have the store image, which has the data binding of store image. So the trick here is to tell the route. So the route is in the URL, which is that part that said subdomain dot domain slash store and then slash ID. So our route is slash store. That's what we're going to. You can think of this like a blog, right? So you'd have slash post and then the name of the post, the unique value for the name of the post or something along those lines. That unique value is typically called a slug. So you'll use a slug, which in our case is this unique ID, to find the actual record to display on this page. So that's how it's using the, that value at the end to find it. So let's take a look in Builder at how you go about that. It's pretty straightforward once you know how to do it. If you go to the URL page routes on the left side, I've got a page route set up for slash store, and it's going to that store view public page. So that's this page back here. So what that means is whenever someone goes to slash store, it's going to automatically open that page. So that'll take them there, but then I need to tell Builder 
how to use the other value that's inside of that's after the slash the ID there's a toggle here called dynamic page data and you can read a little bit about it here and we will post a full-blown lesson on it but what you want to do is toggle that on and then you're gonna add one mapping so what you're doing is you're mapping data from somewhere else in the URL to the data that's in the collection so what we're telling it is that this slash store is from the collection stores and that the field we're going to be looking for to find the unique store that we want to match up to is the ID and where we're going to find the ID to match is in one of these four places the two primary that you can think of are the segment and the query string so segments in a URL are all the different places of the slash so you have slash store and then you have slash the ID query string is what you'll see if you see a question mark and then something equals something or so you'll, you might see this in like a, um, a newsletter where you click the link and it goes through some newsletter software and you'll see up there it says like a question mark equals da -da 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 -da, and something else and something else those are called query strings in this case I'm using segments um, and that's just because that's how I wanted to do it but you could really do it however you want um, and then I use segment number zero so segment zero means the first segment after this right so segment zero is slash whatever at the end of this route so that's how it's pulling that data so what that means is that if I go back here we take a look again we have slash store and then this here is our segment zero and that segment zero we've told the we've told builder is the stores ID so that's how it finds the proper one to open so when they click open it goes to that store and then the data binding knows that we're in this particular store and fills out the data so that's how you can create an, an ID and then open a specific record using that ID now if you didn't want to have a dynamic list of them and you say you wanted to have this just for a particular user um, you could do this by when a user signs up and they're going through their onboarding process the probably the way that I would do it is allow them during their onboarding let's say let's say it was um, the user is going to create a store an online store presence for themselves so they sign up they're going through their onboarding you're probably going to ask them to provide a, a name of their store and upload an image and those kind of things much like this store edit so if they're as they're going through that once they fill out all the data go ahead and create the store record and then you've got everything already set up and you can just display to them that store link just like this and they'll have what they need um, so I would create it as a separate collection don't actually store it on the user just because later if you ever decided you wanted to allow them to have multiple stores you're already set up in a data structure that will allow for that so if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask in the community thanks again have a good day